Hey guys, Stephen here from Vanguard Tactics, and today I'm joined with Amy. Hey. So, and this is a slightly different video for you today. Even a con just constantly slurp. Or, Sorry, um, I forgot. No slurping. No slurping. I was told. No slow thing and I forgot something. Right, so anyway, get back to the video. Uh, this video is a little bit different, and this is basically a vlog of mine and Amy's trip to the Las Vegas Open. Um, and I really hope you enjoy this video. What we've got coming up in this video is basically our entire trip. Yeah. So our two week trip, what we got up to. So if you're ever interested in going to the LVO, you're gonna see behind the scenes, you're gonna see some sites of Vegas, some things to do while you're at the LVO or in Vegas generally. So um, guys, you know, if you're, get some painting, do some hobby, put this on in the background and hopefully you're gonna enjoy it. There is an interview um, that we recorded prior to playing um, mm -hmm. where I go over all the questions that I was asked. So like my, about my list, what I'm looking forward to playing, um, who I'm looking forward to playing the most, uh, things, you know, challenges that are ahead of me, what I think of the terrain set up and all that good stuff. So um, it's gonna be really educational for those who want to go to the LBO next year, you know, there's there's pictures and videos of all the scenery, all the tables set up, um, you know, some of my games, you can see some of the armies and all that kind of good stuff. I will do a very brief overview of all of the games that I played. Yeah. All six games, I'll let you know how I get on. But if you want to know more details in regards to the um, exact details of how I got on, there's two videos or podcasts I would recommend you to check out. Number one podcast or video is The Road to the LVO, okay? And then the second one is called The LVO. In The Road to the LVO, me and Mark talk about, you know, how I've built my list, how it's evolved, uh, why I've got different things in the list, the composition, and basically all the, all the minutia um, prior, and all the play testing that I've done. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the video or podcast, which is available on iTunes, Spotify, all that good stuff now, audio form, Mark interviews me on exactly how I got on into some really, uh, good detail um, so yeah go and check that out for a little bit more about that today is just gonna be a bit more of a general so if you want to see the vlog check this one out if you want to hear the details go and check those out and I'll probably put a link somewhere up here now if you click that you'll probably take you straight to it um, so yeah guys let's go over to the vlog see you in a minute So it looks like it's gate 19 for us then. Las Vegas, here we come. So we're flying with Virgin today and uh, yeah, leaving a very sunny England. So let's hope it's even sunnier in Vegas. You excited, Amy? I'm really excited, yeah. Really excited to leave the UK and get some time away. This is not good vlogging skills, you're in the darkness. Oh well, that's better. Look at that, that's my... Yeah, well, I'm, a, I'm an amateur. Right, let's go and get on the plane. So we made it. Las Vegas, here we come. Amy, how was the flight? It was entertaining. I watched films. What did you watch? I watched The Lesson. And I also watched... Oh, I can't remember the first one. Ice Age. Ice Age. Yeah, I watched, I watched uh, Annabelle Comes Home oh, in Zombieland. It's good. Yeah. All right, so we've got to go through customs and uh, we're getting picked up by Mike. Hopefully, fingers crossed, Mike's going to find us. And then we're on to our hotel, the Luxor. So, yeah, there's the old nice big Las Vegas sign. Mike, I hope you're waiting for us. I really do. I'm not sure what's going to happen otherwise.
Oh, you're holding his hand. You sacked me off. So Amy, where are we? We are in the Luxor Hotel and we have just discovered this massive sphinx. So in the Luxor Hotel, yeah, this is right in the center and then a huge beam of light shoots out of there. Yeah, you can see it for miles. So and we have a... also discovered the food court, which we wish we could have discovered yesterday. Yep, we just found this, the food court, which we didn't know was here. We so, see that show last night, right? yeah, we saw the show run last night. Yeah, it was very, very good, very interesting. There is also another show around here that I want to see, but um, yeah, I don't know if Amy wants to come to this one. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why you'd want to go and see that show. Looks awful, yeah, dreadful guys, don't yeah. Today, we're going to go to the old town of Vegas. Fremont Street? Fremont, Fremont Street. Fremont Street, I think Fremont it is. Street, that's where we're heading today. But we're on a mission to get breakfast, but it's a six mile walk, so yeah, we're gonna be trekking. Anyway, catch you guys in a bit. We just headed out of Excalibur, and now we're heading into New York, New York. MGM over there, beautiful sunny day. We've just arrived at the Golden Nugget Hotel. It's one of the traditional old town Vegas hotels. Oh, the chocolate box. They've named it after me. How convenient. Okay, so we are outside Heart Attack Grill, which we've been told about. Um, so apparently you can actually weigh yourself here. So, go on then Steve, off you go. Oh. And Janina. Not a lot. 
How do you feel about that weight? Yeah, it's good. Yeah? Not enough to eat for free though. No? Not enough to eat for free. Do you know how heavy you have to be to eat for free? 300 pounds. 350 pounds. Hundred and twenty seven. Wow, well, good good number. Great number. Good number. You're not enough to eat for free either. So we're here at the uh, welcome to the downtown Las Vegas. Um, I'll be honest guys, don't come at 10 o'clock. Nothing's open. A uh, little bit disappointed to be honest. Yeah, yeah not gonna lie, a little bit disappointed. So uh, probably gonna go shopping now instead. Yeah. Good morning everybody. So, um, everybody. Morning. <laughs> this is Brian. You may have seen him. Oh, this one, this one. This is not Brian, this is Amy. <laughs> this is Brian. You may have seen him from such videos as The Road to SoCal Part 1. There was never a Part 2, by the way, because all my footage got destroyed. So, anyway, hopefully, now I've got this much better camera, we're not going to have those problems. So where are we going today, guys? We are going to the Grand Canyon. Going to the Grand Canyon. We've just been to a country store, Yeah. Um, as Amy has a horse, and she wouldn't let me buy a cowboy hat. No. It looked amazing though. It did no, look it great. Didn't. It looked excellent. Didn't. See picture of me looking epic in my cowboy hat now. Okay, so you've seen that. As you agree, I'm sure. Awesome. Excellent. <laughs> Things I've got to put up with. You know, not allowed to have my own cowboy hat. Um, anyway, so However, I did buy a nice belt. You did, yeah, yeah. It was a nice belt. So we are going to the Grand Canyon today. Are you excited, Amy? Yeah, really excited. This is the only reason why Amy agreed to come to the LVO was to see the Grand Canyon. Yeah, it was on my it was on my list of things that I needed to see. Yeah, yeah, in my lifetime. And we one of the modern wonders of the world, or I guess ancient wonders of the world, right? Yeah. And Amy's bullied Brian to drive us there. Darn. <laughs> I hate driving so much. No, yeah. you don't. You've got, a, uh, you've got a wicked truck to drive us in. Yeah, we've got a very cool truck we're in. Yes. A, that's why there's three of us in front. We haven't just stuck Amy in the middle. Yeah, it's a, a Ford F-150. We have a Ford F-150. A Lariat, which gives it a full cab. It's a full cab, I mean, cab. whatever yeah. that means. Um, so. Yeah, so we um, are still in Las Vegas. Um, I think Brian is just searching for the Postal zip code, maybe the zip code. Oh, um, yeah, getting the lingo. Yeah, of how we get to the Grand Canyon. So um, we don't use those. We just look up the address. Oh, you look at the. We don't. We don't punch no. So in England, they punch in a postal code that is actually how you find addresses and houses. Like that's how you use the. Yeah. The the the. the, the oh, you've literally just put in Grand Canyon Skywalk. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Mm. So you, that's how we're the gonna sat find nav. It. You punch the postal code into your sat nav and then it gives you the directions. Yeah. Yeah, we put it in our GPS. We put the address in the GPS. Okay. And, and where, where are you placing that now? That's, what's this called? The dash. The dash. The dash. The dash. Yeah, and what are you, uh, what are these things? That, for you it's the indicator. For me it's the blinker. Blinker, yeah. Okay. Blinker. And the handbrake? What's the handbrake, Brian? Come on, we've been over this. Parking brake? The parking brake, yeah. Oh, is it? Where? And the it's gear. What, what's the gear? Break, but... What's the gear stick called? The shifter. The shifter. Oh wow. The shifty yeah. shifter. And that apparently is a what? What's on the front of there? Windshield. No, front of that. The wipers. No. The hood. The hood. No, that's not the hood. Um. The bonnet. It's the car bonnet. The hood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what a beautiful day in Vegas. Brian, where are we? We're at the Hoover Dam. Hoover Dam. Just hoovering around. It's a damn place. Your puns are on point today, mate. A bunch of damn people. So you can see the damn water. We got lost, so uh, we thought we would follow the Skyline Grand Canyon Band. It's going to lead us all the way.
So we've just got to the ranch that I can't pronounce. Halapai. Halapai Ranch at the Grand Canyon. And what Grand Canyon point are we at? We're at Grand Canyon West. We're Grand Canyon West. So there is an admission fee, uh, but yeah, we get access to this place. It's like a jail. Sweets and snacks. Steve is so rubbish that, bless the ranger, he can't stand how awful he's being now. He's actually got to go over and tell him. He just can't handle how bad Steve's been. First go. Tenth go. This is a demonstration of a quick draw, which Stephen and Brian will be doing in a minute. So, I've never used a gun before. Brian has. So it'll be really embarrassing if I beat him. Draw. Oh! <laughs> oh! Ah! Yes! <laughs> I'm, I'm just very dead. Always now. packing, you see? Always packing. No, 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 no. So we are here at the Grand Canyon and just look at it.
sunset at the Grand Canyon and absolutely <laughs> freezing. Incredible. <laughs> Hey guys, so we're at the Bailey's Hotel. We're at the Bally's Hotel. And uh, we are just outside the LVO. So let's head on in and um, we'll go meet some of the guys. But yeah, very exciting. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing the table layout, seeing what the LVO has to offer. So um, I, think, I think we're getting close by the signs. Forty K champs. So it looks like most of the tables are set up already. It's looking good. This is exactly where I want to be playing. On these on this sort of table terrain, it's good. And it's so nice to see a huge event like this but with such fantastic quality mats so you're not just playing on wooden boards you've got well painted terrain different types um, yeah absolutely fantastic and this is exactly what you want from a quality event so it's really great to see that the frontline gaming guys have put such a huge amount of effort into their terrain and tables to make this not only a really competitive event but something that you're going to enjoy playing on as well The Mars theme tables, Ruin City tables, the Jungle Swarm tables, Desert. And here we are. The first ever 1,000 person 40K event. And uh, here's old Brian. Brian's here. How you doing, Brian? Doing well. You doing well? I'm tired. You're tired. So, um, Brian, obviously, Team Vanguard Tactics. I don't have you, my shirt on. You excited for tomorrow? Yes. You probably need to speak up because the microphone's there. Yep. Excited for tomorrow? Yes. Very excited. So, um, yeah, I can't believe how big this place is. Anyway, bit of a behind the scenes for you and uh, not sure what the plan is now. As a team, we're going to go out for Vanguard Tactics for dinner tonight, um, chill out a bit, hopefully not talk too much Warhammer and we'll save that for tomorrow. So uh, check out my interview next on my current feelings about the event and what I'm worried about, what I'm looking forward to and overall my strategy going into the weekend. See you guys in a bit. Okay, so Steve, you touched a little bit on the terrain earlier and how it came out three days before you had to submit your list. Tell me how you feel about the terrain now that you've actually seen it. I mean, the, like I said, the guys here at Frontline Gaming have done an absolutely incredible job. One of the guys on the Vanguard Tactics team, uh, Zeka, he's been responsible for painting up this terrain and it's just... The quality is absolutely fantastic. So, you know, nice colors, everything matches the tables. Um, you know, there's huge pieces in the middle, ones around the outside, big line of sight blockers. So it, it, no matter where you go, it's a really immersive uh, table, which is great. So it actually makes you feel like you're playing a, a war game. Um, so yeah, I, I'm really happy with the quality of the terrain, the way it's been, the finish of it. Um, yeah, so yeah, hats off to the, the guys here and I can't wait to play tomorrow on it. Okay, so you told us a little bit about um, which lists you are most worried about. Yep. Can you tell us what lists you're least worried about? Yeah, so what am I looking forward to playing? Uh, something like Brian, you met him, him earlier. He's got loads of big knights and I'm very good at killing very big knights. So um, yeah, hopefully I get to play Brian, yeah. 
Um, yeah, anything with, yeah, like, so Chaos Knights, really good for me, because as soon as I get stuck in with one of my characters, they just whoosh, take them out. Um, so yeah, that, that's going to be preferable to me. Um, um, my list is actually very good against Space Marines in general. Um, I hit them much harder than they hit me, uh, and obviously there's going to be a lot of Space Marine players over here. Um, and I am, because I've been doing so much playtesting against Space Marines, I feel very confident going to that matchup, whereas they haven't been practicing against my list. So hopefully I'll have that upper hand there um, of just getting a few more. And as I say, guys, the repetitions are everything. And I, you know, I teach this on the mentorship program. You know, we work on a list, we refine it, we get it correct, and through that you know we we analyze what we're doing and perfect it so that you've got an answer to absolutely everything um, and if you really want to maximize your army like I'm taking pure blood angels um, and I'm making it work I'm gonna make it competitive so no matter what army you play when you get enough reps in and you're experienced enough with that list and you know what to do against all the opposition and what to look out for and what to expect you can be a very very competent and good player with any army that's out there at the moment okay so being such a big event there's obviously some great players here this weekend yep tell us your top three players that you would like to play and why <sighs> top three players i would like to play um i don't know if i'd like to play any of them actually to be <laughs> no it's um so a couple of uh, sort of names that would stand out to me is I'd love to get the chance to play Brandon Grant. We've had a really good rapport. Um, we had a really good meeting at SoCal. We've done podcasts together. Um, and I love the way that he plays the game. So I'd really like to play Brandon. And he won the LVO last year. So to get the opportunity um, and see the way he plays his list would be a real lesson. You know, win or lose um, would be fantastic. Um, who else is there? Um, I'd love to play Nick Nalavati, um, again an absolutely fantastic um, and previous LVO champion. Um, me and him get on great, so I know we'd have a really good game at the table. Who else who I would like to play? Um, either someone like Jim Vessel, um, who's done absolutely fantastic this year, or maybe Richard Siegler. Um, again, I love the, the spirit in which they play the game, and for me that's what it's all about. So any of those guys would be a pleasure to play, win or lose. Okay, so you've told us what list you are taking this weekend. Yep. Tell us a little bit about the hardest part of playing your list. So the hardest part of playing my list is when I should be aggressive and when I should sort of hold back and be reserved. Um, the Not to kind of uh, sort of say a pun but you know I kind of see red a lot with my list I think a lot of Blood Angel players do they want to draw the first blood so to speak um, because you've got a very hard hitting army it can be in people's face really really early um, and often I found the best way to play the army is to actually be a lot more reserved and be aggressive later on so when making that switch for me um, is all about understanding and reading the game and if you go too early it's game over um, and if I go too late I won't score enough points so yeah it's knowing when to push when to hold back that can often be the temptations there I know that my characters can go in and smash everything up but it's not always the best play so that's kind of what the hardest part is okay now just talk to us a little bit about how you're gonna guarantee your charges yeah, so the Blood Angels are renowned for making their charges. As I said, I make, you know, I'm, I excel in the combat phase. So for me, I only will make a charge if I can reliably make it. Now, there's always going to be a chance that I fail, um, but often I'll try and put myself in a position where I've got a 3D 6-inch charge, I'm getting plus 2 to my charges, um, and I'm going to get some re-rolls there. So I don't make any unnecessary charges if I don't think I'm gonna make it so often what I'll do is bring my units down in previous turns hide them for a turn then move them up and then I'm needing like a, a three inch charge which is for me all for me unfailable uh, unfailable then um, so that's what I'm kind of be gonna be looking to do and then when I get there I'm wrapping and trapping so I'm not really even trying to kill my opponent and I think this is a real shock to people when I get a wrap and a trap on I can then consolidate I can pile in and then I'm making very 
very easy charges for the rest of the game then. So there's only probably two in each game that I need to make sure, and that's why I've got the command points ready. And again, something I teach on the mentorship is planning out when you're gonna use your command points and how to do that so that you can be very strategic in making sure that you don't just spend them all too early and you make sure you have them for when you need them. Tell us why you picked your weapon loadout. Yeah, so this is a, a question that I've had in the Blood Angel forums. Why have I picked the weapon loadout? I found that with the Death Company, four Thunder Hammers was enough. Um, I typically play and use them either turn one, early doors, or turn three. Now, if I'm looking to use the Death Company and the Thunder Hammers to literally take out knights or take out big targets, I'm gonna wait until turn three and then apply the pressure later on. And just with their, because what happens at turn three in a Blood Angel army, I get an additional attack so these guys get two attacks base they get plus two for charging so I'm up to four I get plus one for being a death company and then I also get another one for having the sanguine or near me so these guys are getting six attacks each I can often fight twice so four thunder hammers is the for me the sweet spot on efficiency to do everything I need to and then I just need to be careful with my positioning um, so that's that and then with the sanguinary guard I got a unit of swords um, or I've got, sorry, I got two units of swords, a unit of axes. The unit of axes is really nice if I'm using them early on in the game so that when I wrap in trap against marines, I wound on threes in their subsequent fight phase, whereas the swords are better on the charge and killing on the charge, but the thunder hammers are just there in case I need something where I need to wound on twos just to maybe kill a model or two, so I've got a free charge for the next turn. So um, the swords are a little bit cheaper, so I've kind of gone for those, um, but often because of the blood angel plus one to wound, it negates the, um, the sort of lack of strength that that weapon profile has but the minus three on the swords is incredible against marines as well and then when i'm into turn three they these guys become minus four so every marine player doesn't even get an armor save against me so being in las vegas itself is actually quite can be actually quite overwhelming um coming to an event this size as well tell us a little bit about how you prepared for this event yeah, so the preparation, and I've sp I spoke briefly about some of the things that I've done. I've tested against literally every army I could think of, um, that I could also get a good player to play against me. I've theory crafted against a lot of the other lists that are out there. Um, the guys that I'm coaching at the moment for the LVO, um, you know, I've, I've gone through the same rigorous preppers that, that I've put them through. Um, and again, I go into this in a lot more detail on episode three of that podcast, so do check that out. But yeah, I've basically put myself in every single situation I could imagine worst case scenario what if the terrain's like this what if there's only that um, you know I've asked my opponent do they want to go first or second what's the best for them and I've made sure that in all my play testing I'm not just relying on dice so if some crazy dice rolls happen maybe, maybe we redo it or think about what the average would be just to make sure I'm well versed in making the right decisions at the right time so tomorrow during your gameplay um, if things don't go to plan or they're not going quite the way that you hoped yep. how are you going to handle your feelings tomorrow throughout the game um, so yeah I think it's, it's really hard because obviously I've flown you know across the globe to come here um, it happened at SoCal I lost my first game I just played against a, a, a really good opponent um, played against a matchup that I'm going to lose nine times out of ten um, and it was just really unfortunate and I could have just thrown the whole competition away at that point but for me I'm very good at number one being grateful of the fact that I'm here playing in Vegas uh, the, the game that I love and I think that for me really helps me enjoy the game for what it is but coming into this with expect the right expectations, so for me, four, like I said, four in two, maybe five in one, um, that's okay if I lose my first game. That's fine, I just need to win the next five to meet my top end expectations. Um, so I think it's always nice to, to have a good realistic goal. And because I've been to so many events, that goal is realistic for me. If this was my first event, I'd just try and win one. And if I made a friend, that's probably you know a good starting point. So. Like, like when I go to the gym, I've got my set point and I try and improve on that number every single week. So it's very similar really. Um, and I think the other thing that I do is really 
not try to get too emotional with the game itself, okay? Dice at any point could throw me off, but there's no point moaning about your dice rolls if you are unable to critically think about your game and analyze if you've made any mistakes. If you're relying on good dice rolls to win you a game, you're probably not making the best strategic moves in the game. So there's probably deployment errors you made. And for me, that's all areas that I can work on. So if I go and play Brandon Grant tomorrow and I lose, I'm probably gonna get an absolute masterclass in how his army works. And for me to go away, think about that game so I can improve for next time is what it's all about for me. Okay, so we've actually had uh, an off-topic question um, coming from uh, Facebook, question on Facebook. Um, and it's actually about what is the, l the, the most calorific thing you've eaten so far being in Las Vegas? So what's the most calorific thing I've eaten in Vegas so far? I think it has to be the nachos here. I mean, I've had cheesecake, I've had pancakes. I mean, a pancake here is a thousand calories per pancake which is crazy um, and as a nutritionist I'm just like blown away by the amount of food that's here in yeah so I think it's the nachos I think it's probably about looking at the portion that we got I reckon about 4,000 calories for that portion of nachos I mean they were incredible but yeah I don't think I need to eat for a week now and lastly is there anything you would like to say to your opponents that you'll be playing this weekend yeah, if we play tomorrow or over the weekend, I hope we have an absolutely wicked game. Um, and I hope that, you know, yourself and me, we just play the game in the true spirit in which it's intended. And that's just letting the best general win that game. So as you know, guys, I'm not into shenanigans. I'm not into gotcha hammer. And I want to be, you know, just have a really clean game with my opponent so that we can go both walk away from that thinking that we both enjoyed it. We're both mentally challenged and um, yeah, hopefully we can build up a good good report so i wish you the best of luck and um, i'll see you at the table over the course of the weekend and i hope you enjoyed this rest of this vlog okay so who are you playing game one and game one is against dark eldar now this game didn't quite go to plan did it no not quite to plan no no and i've learned a lot of lessons from this one um and it's a it's an interesting topic so what i'd like you to do is check out that video the LVO, where me and Mark talk about this game in particular yeah. and some of the things that happened in this game in regards to sportsmanship and all that kind of good stuff. As you know, that's what I'm all about. Um, I just want to make this game um, much better, both on and off the tabletop. So I want to improve sportsmanship within the game and all those good things. And these are all lessons to be learned, I think. So um, I think me and Mark got into a really good discussion. But basically, I lost this game. You did, yeah. I lost by a point, didn't I? Mm -hmm. And it was actually my first full-length game that I've ever watched you play. Yeah. So for me, it was actually quite good to watch what happens and everything. And it was actually really educational for me because I'd never actually watched a, an entire game before. So yeah. this was quite a good one for me to see so that I kind of understood, you know, what it was all about and everything. And mm. yeah, so it was, it was interesting, to say the least. This, this was an interesting game, yeah. But this game didn't actually finish properly. No, quite right. And there was things like I was rushed, we had to restart our game. Yeah. Um, and basically, um, we had an issue with the time. Mm -hmm. Time management was our issue in this game. Yeah. Um, and I was in a real dilemma as to what I could have or should have done. Yeah. Um, one single decision could have let me win that game, and I decided not to take it, which you can hear about later on. So I lost this game. Um, I lost 26-27, mm -hmm. which is a bit gutting, but mm -hmm. um, I did make some mistakes. And I shouldn't have even let it get that close. So yeah. I don't want to win by gotcha hammer or anything like that. Yeah. Um, and anyway, um, yeah. Overall, it was a challenging game. My mm -hmm. opponent played very well um, mm -hmm. and capitalised on my mistakes, so fair enough. Yeah. So anyway, game two was against Daniel, as you're going to see right now. Okay guys, so I'm up against Daniel. Daniel's got a beautifully painted uh, guard army. So I have got first turn. Uh, this, I'll be honest, I'm not liking the terrain and the uh, deployment, but uh, I'll see what I can do. I'm just kind of bunched up here and around there. So we're game two now. Um, 
let's see what I can do against this uh, awful amount of firepower. It's like combat versus firepower. Let's see how it goes. But uh, those Bulgarin are going to be a big problem for me to deal with. Anyway, Daniel, let's have a good game, man. Let's have a good game. And as you can see, Daniel had a wicked army. He had his guard. So, yeah. yeah. And, um, I said to him at the end, I absolutely loved the way he played the game. Mm -hmm. um, me and him were constantly um, like vocal in terms of what we were doing, declaring mm -hmm. our intent, there was no ambiguity in anything, and Daniel played brilliantly. I saw his army, it was really well painted. Oh, it was beautiful, yeah, he had a really cool display stand for it and everything, yeah. it was really nice. That did look really good. And he was a super nice guy, and um, definitely one of my favourites of the tournament. Yeah. Um, and I'd love to play Daniel again. Um, and... Yeah, I think what what I what I had the most respect for Daniel was that it didn't go very well for him on the table. Okay. Um, a few dice rolls went my way and not his, and I was already so far ahead. But he didn't give up at any point. Mm -hmm. um, he kept trying and trying to score as many points as he possibly could. Yeah, good. He didn't just let you know me steamroll him. Mm -hmm. We talked it all out as as he went through it, and it was fantastic. So Daniel, you were an absolute pleasure to play. So thank you very much. Uh, but yeah, I did win that game, and I won thirty eight thirteen. So that's a very high score. So yeah. the maximum you can score is forty two, mm -hmm. um, and obviously I did a very good job at doing that. So my list is performing very very well here. So um, very good. Yeah, and one of the things that I found in game one that was the biggest problem was that his unit, his army is actually a very hard counter to mine. As right. in, like it's kind of the. In Warhammer, you've kind of got the rock, paper, scissors mm -hmm. going on. Um, and if I'm a pair of scissors, he's like that rock to mine. Uh, so, whereas game two, it was kind of the other way around. Yeah. Um, my army just kind of walks through his quite easily. He had a few good things to challenge me, but the dice weren't there to really help him. So, so I'm really sorry, guys, but this is game three now, and I don't have any video footage. Yeah, there was a bit of a delay, wasn't there? Bit of a delay, but slight delay. Slight delay, yeah, um, three hours. <laughs> and I was exhausted, I had a headache, and I just wanted it over and done with, and I didn't want to start getting out the camera, because I'll be honest, guys, it's, so, it's actually really hard work to try and, you know, speak to your opponent, set up in the time constraints, and then try and do some filming. So yeah. what I need to find is somebody to come with me and just film everything. Yeah, do, That's yeah. what I need. That, you, it's like you need your own PA, you know? Yeah, for yeah. tournaments. So, yeah, so guys, leader. if you think Amy, or you know someone like Amy should you know, follow me around and film all my games. It's like you need a personal photographer as well, you know? Then comment in below, and if there's enough likes and comments, maybe mm -hmm. Amy will be like, okay, right, the community want it, so uh, yeah. Okay. Um, anyway, so yeah, I'm sorry guys, there's no footage for this, but I played an absolute gent called Daniel again, and um, he had an Eldar. We just agreed, look, it's late, Yeah. let's not mess about, let's go as hard as we possibly can. You actually didn't get back until 11.30pm Yeah. And that, that night. And that was quick. Yeah. Because me and da mine and Daniel's game took 30 minutes. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. It was so quick because mm. we didn't play KG, which we should have both done. We just basically went hard, straight at each other as quickly as possible. Um, it didn't go very well for Daniel. It went really well for me. Yeah. And what was the score by the end? Forty-two eight. Oh wow! So okay. I scored maximum yeah. points in that game. Yeah. Um, my rolling was ridiculous. Yeah, which is odd for you. Yeah, it's odd, um, but. It's... That hardly ever happens. I know. Yeah. But anyway, sometimes it does. Mm. Um, me and him talked it through. You actually met him the next day, didn't you? Yeah. Um, nice, in, nice guy. Really, really nice guy. Mm -hmm. And hopefully me and him get to play again because, yeah, we can actually have a proper game rather than a late night one where yeah. we just kind of want it to be over. Which is a bit of a shame, really. But anyway, 42-8. Cool. So, so game, game four. Game four. This is against a guy called Michael. He's running Iron Hands. Me and Michael played at SoCal. Mm -hmm. And um, we had a really nice game then. We actually drew. This time, um, we had another great game. I went first. Okay. Blood Angels do what they do best. They, you know, jump on in, smash up planes with Thunder Hammers. I got some really good wraps and traps off. Um, and yeah, again, pretty much sealed that one up quite quickly. Against Mike and me and Mike played at SoCal with a great game. And we drew that game, didn't we? We that did draw that yeah. game, yeah. Super tight um, game. That's my goal for this game. 
Um, so yeah, I'm not looking the Blood Angels, Get Company versus the Iron Hands. And yeah, I've made it up to the top 100 tables now, so hopefully we can continue playing okay. We've got the judges over here. Go on, Adam. How you boys doing? Fine. Tired. <laughs> Tired. 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 Okay. These guys are an absolutely fantastic <laughs> job, so uh, yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure to meet you both while I've been here. You too, too. So let's see what we can do. So um, there was, wasn't really, Mike played it well, not, but not really much he could do to be honest. So um, yeah, that was 37-13 uh, to me. Okay. So at this point in the tournament, I've lost one and won three. Yeah, won three. So not bad, because my goal, remember, was four and two. Okay. So I'm still on track for that. Still on track, yeah. Mm -hmm. So game five. Game five, up against Malik from the UK. Okay. You'll see that now. I'm up against the one and only Malik. I can't believe we came all this way to Vegas and I played someone from the UK. Pretty much. So, look at this absolute film. So I'm deployed back here. He's over there. Uh, so Malik is from Dice Down. Go check them out. Uh, yeah, he's just gone first. So uh, the skill list. Lots of shooting. Go first. Yeah. You can do it. I think I can that's do some, it. Yeah. That's some big chat there, guys. Big that's chat. So I mean, look at that deployment. And I've just stood on my tray, so that's an alright mess. <laughs> so anyway, let's have a good game, bro. And, um, yeah, the. What was he playing? He was playing the Imperial Fist, like, air wing. And also, so Space Marines again, uh, the Fist uh, planes, and also, like, artillery. This is a really hard counter to mine. There's not really much I can do. I made a really vital mistake turn one right. with deployment because there was nowhere else for me to really deploy. Okay. Um, but some certainly some lessons learned there and le lessons that I've actually now put into practice at other events from the mm -hmm. lessons I've learned from that game in particular um, and they've gone the other way. Okay. So, so you know what you did. You corrected yeah. it. Yeah. Excellent. And... If I would have gone first in that game, it makes it a little bit easier. I can correct my mistake straight away, but mm -hmm. because I didn't, I got punished. And although I tried to do the best I possibly could, that game ended up in 18 to me, 32 to Malik. So okay. um, yeah, it was good. Okay. So still on track for the four and two. So at this point, yeah. I have three wins, two losses, and then I'm up against a really good player with his um, Raven Guard mm -hmm. and more Space Marines. Um, and I scored, my, my plan in this game was to score as many points as I could early on mm -hmm. and his army is a lot more durable than mine so I need to okay. score early then back off right. um, and put him on the back foot where he's trying to constantly chase me and catch me up. Right. He didn't manage to do so and I won 28-26. Well done! So the game plan worked. Excellent! Um, so again, like you, you just need when you're playing in these events and you're thinking, right, what's the game plan here? Mm -hmm. um, when we talk about decision making, um, Decision making is something that at the start of the game you have so many decisions to make mm -hmm. and there is actually a, or so many paths you can possibly take and the best general is the one that can narrow that down very quickly to pinpoint the path which is the correct one. Right. Because if you don't do that you're going to constantly feel like you're like sort of constantly like chasing your tail or yeah. um, having a bit of a struggle there to sort of catch up. So um, you need to have a game plan and stick to it. So this was your first LVO? This was my first LVO. What, tell us your overall experience of your first LVO. So on the whole, absolutely loved it. Yeah? I love the event. I mm -hmm. love meeting so many people. So for everyone that came to say hello, um, it was an absolute pleasure. It really, really was. There was, and there was quite a few. Yeah. Yeah. I was quite overwhelmed, actually. So was I, yeah. It, it, it was almost like we couldn't finish a conversation without someone coming to say and shake your hand or introduce themselves. And So it was actually really nice for me to see, you know, how well thought of you are and everything because this is, well, obviously I don't go to any of your events because I'm normally doing events of my own, but of course events of my own. Um, so it was actually really nice to see you at a real big event and... Yeah. Yeah, just see how many people came over to say hello and they're all so nice and so humble about all your videos and things. So, yeah, it was really nice to see. Yeah, and I think a lot of people sort of um, spoke about what the work I've been doing in terms of sportsmanship. Yeah, yeah. Um, you have been labelled the community good guy, I believe. The, the, the no cheater. 
the yeah the non cheater community good guy. Yeah. Um, well, I'm, I don't know about good guy, but I'm happy to wave that banner anyway. So well, um, the CGG, I think I sort of yeah, the CGG. The CGG. Mm. Yeah, community good guy. Yeah. So um, yeah, look, guys, sportsmanship is means everything to me. Um, it really does, and I want to try and change mindsets the way we play games. Mm -hmm. Both, you know, from my background in. You know, I used to play for like national level volleyball. I'm, you know, I've been British champion in bodybuilding. And the a lot of the things that I've learned through all the coaching courses I've done, being a PE teacher and all that stuff, it all stems back to sportsmanship. Yeah. And I really want to help change the way that we play this game. And on the whole, it's getting better. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's certainly improved over the years. Um, there's so many people coming back into the hobby now that have been burnt from it before. Mm -hmm. um, and I just want to make sure that as we keep grow growing as a community, mm -hmm. as the competitive scene you know, improves, Games Workshop are doing an incredible job. Like, absolutely incredible. And we're so lucky to have such a great company steering the ship, mm -hmm. pushing it in the right direction. Um, so I really want to help. Yeah, and um, you are, and you are doing that, and I people are definitely recognising that, and have recognised that just yeah. from going to your view. So, so aim to do next year as well. Definitely. Yeah. That's the plan. Okay, so tell us your overall ranking from the LVO. So I think I finished in ninety third place. Oh, okay. At the LVO, out of a thousand people. But and then what was your what was your aim? Well, the aim was to make the top hundred. Perfect. So the aim was to go four and two, so mm -hmm. I did that. Yeah. But not only that, I actually broke into the top 100 ranking of the entire year. Excellent. So I'm really happy about that. Um, I think I finished like 15th or 18th, mm -hmm. like Space Marine player in the world. Pretty happy with that as well, because obviously they're very hot. Um, and now we're into a new season. Mm -hmm. And I'm currently number one Blood Angel player. Oh, excellent. Well yeah. done. So recently did an event, um, you know, last weekend yeah um the beachhead brawl and i'm going to be doing another video which will be out next saturday all about that so you can find out again how i change my list you can see all that good stuff and if you want my list all you need to do and i give it give you guys a cheat sheet as soon as you sign up all about blood angels yeah because i've had so many questions about the blood angels then all you need to do is head to the bottom of this and you'll see a link to say you know download steven's blood angel list Go sign up for it. You just pop your email address in. It sends it straight over to you with that cheat sheet. So go and check that out. So I'm be doing. I'm gonna try and keep up the vlogs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've got a whole tournament review done of, and I got. I was a little bit better at filming the beachhead brawl. So that one's coming up. So anyway, Amy, thank you so much. It's good to be a um, guest on your YouTube channel. Yeah. 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 You're like famous now. Uh, I mean, yeah, I was famous From before you. The yeah. ten people that watch this on a regular yeah. basis. <laughs> you know, you're famous to them. So um, anyway, guys, uh, hope you enjoy the rest of this uh, video. town called Nelson. Just look at this place. One of the creepiest places I've ever seen.
So Amy, what are we doing now? We are just waiting to board our plane. You might have to speak up a little bit. What are we doing now? We are just waiting to board our plane. Yep, so we fly home now to Heathrow uh, from Las Vegas Airport. So we had a really good day today. We did an escape room, didn't we? Yeah, that was got, true. got some frozen yogurt. Yeah. No frozen ice cream. No frozen, well, all ice cream is frozen. But all ice cream. Some frozen ice cream rolls is what we had. That's it. And um, we also went to the Red Rock, which obviously you've already seen, so um, yeah. that was really good. Yeah. And now we have a nine hour flight home. Yeah. Yeah, not great. But at least we got to sit together until we first checked in. Yeah, we managed to change our seats, so the nice people at Virgin helped us to move our seats. Yeah. And I've just bought some snacks. So we have snacks for the plane. Oh my god, snacks. So good. Yeah. Got my new bag. Yep. It just looks like your belly. It does actually, I thought that. It just looks like your belly. <laughs> it's been a big, big, big trip. Big eats. Yep. Big eats in Las Vegas. So this is the new uh, bag you'll be seeing in videos when I'm filming at competitions. Keep the camera in here and other essentials. Yeah. In my, what did Brian call it? A crossover bag. Yeah, something like that. I can't remember. Cr cross body bag. I would just like to say a massive thank you shout out to Brian then. Massive shout out to Brian, yeah. Brian was incredible. Brian was... Yeah. Yeah, he was incredible. Yeah. yeah. Took us to a few good places. Really grateful, yeah. Went to a really good uh, ribs place last night. Do you take any pictures? Uh, where? The ribs? Uh, no, I didn't. Then all did I. They went to this really good barbecue rib place, so... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was really good. So that concludes our trip, guys. Yeah. And uh, we'll be flying home now, so... Hopefully, uh, if you watch this, you would have known that actually we landed safe. Yeah. Because I've had to edit what I have got back and upload it. So um, if you're watching this, we made it. If you didn't, then I either didn't edit it or we didn't. So, um, and he left yeah. everything in his world to me. You want the bag. I do want the belly bag. Yeah, I have the bag. The belly bag. Right. See you later, guys. See Trip over.